The first video I watched was a science book from Pakistan where Pranav pointed out the erroneous premise of religion in science. That video did not require any additional evidence, wherein the book itself served as the evidence. I shared that video on my Twitter with the following statement. Now then as you know it, YouTube started showing me a lot of his videos. And I, given my first impression, indulged. As I advanced over a few videos led by his own method to argument, my brain started assessing his takes using his own techniques. So in today's video guys, I'm going to offer you a brief insight into how Pranab Radhakrishnan offers logic, reason and science in his own videos. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Linda Ashok and you are watching Mastermind. Before I proceed, I need to let you know that my reactions are triggered by actions by individuals and not the whole individual. My criticism here is very precise and specific to Pranav's approach to critiquing others on a public platform where he does not stand up to what he keeps emphasizing about evidence in videos where evidence is necessary, such as the video that we will watch today. I am using one video, for example. Maybe I will share my take on other videos too, when and if necessary. Please note that inclination towards science and logic is one thing, to being a scientist or a logician. And whatever I will say in this video is only specific to the video clip I will play here, because I intend to keep this analysis as objective as possible so you can learn the art of listening, of argument and fair criticism that has working takeaway. Number one, it is a fact that Pranav is not a taught or trained scientist, nutritionist or drug developer. He inclines toward science for reasons he can best explain and attempts to evaluate things with a scientific lens. The word scientific is an adjective and my cognition suggests that scientific in him is via the verb of reading online journals, peer-reviewed papers, academic stuff, news articles, etc. Number two, it is a fact that Pranav designed a bingo card to cancel people he does not agree with as for his scientific knowledge. If he has all the logical fallacy metrics crossed off in a line, he impresses on his subscribers an absolute lack of scientific merit in the conversation of the person he is critiquing. Number three, his bingo card has 25 grades covering these aspects of judgment. Note that this is not a scientific template designed by any scientist or behavioral psychologist. This design is a grid to gamify his reaction videos. He also spoke of appeal to authority, but that does not appear in this grid. For your speculation, could that exclusion mean he does not want people to have any thoughts about appealing to his authority? Number four, in this video, I will not react to the lady, not because she is a lady, but because she does not appeal to my interest. She appears gullible about the subject she is talking about. She is certainly not suitable to represent the brand in question. The brand is good or bad, but that is not the focus of my video. So let's get started. This is our source is not a steroid, chemical, or any foreign particle that can cause excess damage. That's why it has no side effects. Yeah. Uh, she's talking about homeopathy and homeopathy, all of my audience will probably know that uh, uh, homeopathy is not based on any evidence. We've had tons of systematic, proper, peer-reviewed evidence of how homeopathy has only as much effect as a placebo. And the reason homeopathy has no side effects is because it has no effect. How can it have side effects when it has no effects? There are no active compounds anywhere in the solution. It's usually just pure water. Assuming that anything dissolved in water causes damage to the body, like she said, this is wrong. I After watching Pranav's part in the clip, there seems to be some contradictions, fallacies in argument and lack of awareness. To start with, likening homeopathy to placebo has only as much effect as a placebo. If placebo is psychological than physical, then is homeopathy also psychological 
suggesting that homeopathy has some role to play. Grading homeopathy as placebo is not an insult to homeopathy because placebo works in alternative medicine, conventional medicine and allopathy medicine. Any doctor can testify to the fact that placebo has great application in pain management, IBS, anxiety and depression. Which, if I go with Pranav calling homeopathy placebo, then homeopathy has the potential of addressing everything a placebo is expected to deliver in allopathy, isn't it? Obviously, from the evidence, from the evidence, I should have two more here, but I think there should be a strong man here. She's listening to medicine as well as what's common score. Um, oh, research not provided, research not provided, that's not good. I will see research not here. And I'm um, gonna be one thing to do it. Oh, yeah, there's a pretty monkey thing. Money medicine, all right, fingers, 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 and uh, that's basically fear mongering. Everything is a chemical, so is water, so is everything in the homeopathic medicine. Are those chemicals? Okay, Pranav says everything is chemical, but does not clarify if it is useful chemical or harmful chemical or a mix of both. Here, everything is including homeopathy itself, right? So when he is making a broad statement about homeopathy being just pure water and then consecutively emphasizing everything is chemical, there are two points to note. Kind of questions. One, how can he say homeopathy has no effect and so no side effect because if there are chemicals, there will be effect or side effect. It will be influencing cells significantly or insignificantly. Point number two is homeopathy is not always pure water. Before I begin, let me remind you that this is addressing what it is and not any endorsement of the homeopathic system of medicine. Homeopathy uses a highly diluted substance called remedies made from plants, minerals or other substances and are diluted to a degree that reduces the significance of the source chemicals but not a complete absence of chemicals or compounds. It is not just pure water as stated by Pranav. Some homeopathic remedies contain chemicals such as alcohol, sucrose or lactose. These chemicals are used as preservatives or excipients which are substances that help to deliver the remedy to the body. In addition to preservatives and excipients, some homeopathic remedies also contain active ingredients such as from plants, minerals, animals, synthetic substances, etc. Some homeopathy drugs such as arsenicum album is made from arsenic oxide. Belladonna is made from the deadly nightshade plant. Chamomile, it is made from the chamomile flower. Lachesis muta from the venom of the bushmaster snake and Nux vomica from the seeds of the strychnine tree. So, what is it? How do how are homeopathy medicines made? They are made from everything. They are made from plant sources, animal sources, mineral. Plant sources, animal sources, and minerals. These are all chemicals, right? And some of these definitely cause damage to the body. There are heavy metals that come under minerals that uh, uh, cause excessive liver damage. There are phytotoxins that are harmful to the body that come from plants. Mineral kingdom. Here, no swords and sarcodes. I mean, if you think about it, we have a medicine called X-ray 30. Now, how does it become X-ray 30? X-ray 30 is made from X-rays. Se banti hai. Can you believe it? We have such medicines that are made from X-rays. X-ray is it? X-ray is not a physical material that you can make something out of, right? I think there should be a fallacy for this. Pranav stated his doubt about how is it possible to make homeopathy remedies such as X-ray 30 from X-rays as X-rays are electromagnetic, not a substance that can be used to make any medicine. Valid? But well, Pranav needs to know this and let me explain how it works. X-ray 30 homeopathy drug is made by exposing a vial of alcohol to X-rays. This process is called dynamization and it is a key part of the homeopathic manufacturing process. Once the vial has been exposed to X-rays, it is then succused. Dilution is the process of mixing the remedy with water or alcohol to reduce its concentration. Succution is the process of vigorously shaking the remedy after each dilution. 
Extra 30 is a 30C potency, which means that it has been diluted to one part of the original substance in 100 parts of water or alcohol and then shaken 30 times. It is important to note that X-ray 30 is a very dilute solution. It is estimated that a 30C potency contains less than one molecule of the original substance for a dose. However, homeopaths believe that the dilution and succussion process increases the potency of the remedy and makes it more effective. X-ray 30 is used to treat a variety of conditions including cancer, skin diseases and chronic pain. Mineral kingdom mein mineral se bhi banti hai. And um, which is why the science is very big and our source materials are this very, very big. Huge misrepresentation. Baxson's homeopathy, right? This is huge misrepresentation and that's a straw man fallacy, but I don't see... Oh yeah, misinformation, of course. Yes, indeed. But I don't see anything else. If you guys see something, let me know in the comments and we'll move on to the next video. Again, I do not endorse homeopathy because one, I do not use homeopathy. Two, I did not have the need to consider homeopathy to evaluate its impact on my health. And three, I do not entirely know about the pharmacological aspect of homeopathy. For sure, homeopathy is pretty controversial, which means that the world has not reached an absolute scientific consensus on the effectiveness of homeopathy. Now to develop evidence, like Pranab keeps talking about, there is a need for initiating assumptions, subjected to the interest of pharma communities, available resources and scientific priority. Just asking for evidence is a burden of proof fallacy where, interestingly, Pranav does not cite any peer-reviewed paper to justify his own rationals he brings forth in his videos. Neither in the video nor in the description. So, my message to Pranav is that Indeed, there is a growing concern of social media creators spreading misinformation and it needs the one scientifically inclined like you to counter such messages in the interest of larger public good. But when you suggest citing peer-reviewed evidence to the creators you critique, don't you consider it imperative to cite peer-reviewed evidence in your own videos, helping more people to scientific thinking? Else, you are expecting people to succumb to your authority and growing popularity. Did you know that uh, apple seeds contain cyanide? Did you know that uh, uh, Giloy is talk Challenging non-science is great, but if that approach is not backed by evidence, it is not helpful. The ultimate conclusion from this is that food from a You've gotten a little better, but you can be a lot better. If you want people to take away a good message, I think it's pay attention to nuance and don't be black and white. Now, if you guys appreciate this analysis, which maintains dignity in argument, helping you see how logic and reason operate in science and poise, please like, share and subscribe. I'm ready to hear your side of the story, whether it is in defense of Pranav or acceptance of my takes. So thank you for watching. And you have a wonderful day. Thanks, Pranav, for giving us a watch.